the undisputed, the undefeated cruiserweight champion of the world, the real deal, Evander Holyfield. Holyfield. Okay, you guys, I gave you both instructions in your dressing room. I want to caution you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. Final instructions from referee Richard Steele. Evander Holyfield says should he lose tonight or make a four showing, he will not go back to the cruiserweight division. He says he'll campaign as a heavyweight no matter what happens tonight. He hopes it's all academic. James Quick Tillis, the veteran at 31, six years older than Holyfield. Holyfield 18-0 with 14 knockouts. And Tillis is 38-13-1 with 29 KOs. It is Tillis wearing the white trunks with the red and blue trim, Holyfield in the black trunks with the red trim. So we are underway, round one scheduled for 10. And the most immediate thing that strikes you is that uh, the size differential. Nice punching. Quick Tillis looks like a legitimate heavyweight, big, tall, rangy, and Holyfield much smaller. Tillis uh, saying that he was not intimidated by the scientific high-tech training methods of Evander Holyfield. Easy-going, free-spirited guy. Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. Became boxing's first undisputed cruiserweight champ by knocking out Carlos De Leon in the eighth round back on April the 9th. And on that same card, Tillis KO'd Rod Smith in the second round. But Tillis, since his close defeat against Mike Tyson in 1986, has really been on a roller coaster ride. He had a tough 87, five fights. He got knocked out three times. The only thing that you can say to recommend him for this fight is that he gave uh, Iron Mike Tyson a very hard battle. But that was two years ago when Tyson was really learning how to handle big heavyweights like this, trying to find out what to do with a big guy that moves well. Uh, his uh, 87 three losses is nothing to cheer about and it is a, a mark of his um, instability that he just doesn't present himself ready to fight every time we'll see what he's like today is to put it all in perspective when you talk about that close one with Tyson you have to qualify it was two years ago the crowd will roar anytime Holyfield comes close Holyfield's objective, as taught by Georgie Benton and Lou Duba, was to jab hard right to the uh, chest. Don't even try to hit the head. Just come in hard and throw punches at his shoulder and throw punches at his chest. Keep him from moving. Keep him from bouncing. He's done that so far. He's got him standing straight. He's not bouncing around. He's not running. Holyfield's doing a good job of controlling any running impulse that Quick Tillis might have. Holyfield says that to win tonight, he must control the fight and dictate the pace. Tillis said he'll come out for accommodations and dance all night. Holyfield totally disagreed, expecting Tillis to come out and do a lot of holding. What we'll see here is how the heavy Holyfield punch works on the heavyweights. Because up to this point, he has gone right through light heavyweights and gone right through cruiserweights, and nobody can take the shots of Evander Holyfield. Let's see what he does with a man who's not known for taking a great shot in the last couple of years. Final seconds of this first round. Round one is history. The first round for Evander Holyfield as a heavyweight. Lou Duva, George Benton, Ace Barada in the corner. Well, one of the things that Evander said he would have to do is go to the body, Ferdy. Go right to the chest, right to the front. You just saw a punch right to the chest. That is exactly what uh, Duva teaches with Georgie Benton. Punch anywhere but hit something. The easiest thing to hit is a man's chest. Go for it. That's what he did that first round. Kept him from bouncing, won the round handsy. Did Evander Holy. Tillis's corner. Bo Williford, his manager, handles cuts. Also in there, Lawrence Lakey and Barry Tillis, the younger brother of James. Tillis did not show a uh, or manifest a great desire to fight toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe nor to run. He uh, simply did not much. Round two, it's scheduled for 10. A battle of heavy.
heavyweights. The heavyweight debut for Evander Holyfield in the black trunks with the red trim. Tillis in the white trunks with the red and white trim, red and blue trim. Here's the jab that Holyfield is famous for. He's also famous for his hand speed and his quickness. And so far, it doesn't seem to have suffered despite putting on that extra 12 pounds. That's evident, and that's what you, if you're watching this fight to score it, to score Evander Holyfield progress into the heavyweight. Notice his hand speed. He's just faster than the other guy by just a hair, but he gets it off first, and it lands first, discombobulating any offensive plans that Quick Tillis might have. Evander Holyfield, an excellent, exquisite boxer, uses the jab effectively. All business, not a showboat. That was more a push than anything else. Oh, that was more sloppiness than anything else from Quick Tillis, who's already starting to be a little sloppy. He didn't need to do that. That was too far back to lean into the ropes. He's going to be very careful against Evander Holyfield, or he's in trouble. He's holding his hand up, but he's pulling back from a punch. Evander will eat him up if he keeps pulling back like that because he is not Muhammad Ali. He doesn't have that uh, speed and ranginess to avoid a punch going back. Tillis claims that Holyfield fights off balance. Well, but, well, a lot of that off balance is the um, punching and pushing that Holyfield is doing right now. James Quick Tillis won his first 20 fights, won his first 12 by knockout, thus the nickname Quick. And he used to move a lot quicker as well in the ring. And he said tonight he would like to move in and out side to side. There's a left, a stiff left by Holyfield on the inside. Well, he's going to have to change his name to not so quick Tillis because he's getting outspeeded and slugged. Here's an assault by Holyfield. And the crowd reacts. Capacity crowd of about 5,000 here in the outdoor arena at Caesars Tahoe. Cooling off, making it very pleasant for the fighters and the fans. For one of the fighters. <laughs> the other one isn't having too much fun right now. Tillis, still no offense from Tillis. Still nothing to scare off or hold off Holyfield. Whether he's trying to lure him into a sharp punch, you won't know, but he may find himself on his back waiting for that lure to happen. There was one. What a great example of hand speed. A hard right by Holyfield. That stunned Tillis. And Tillis holding on with nine seconds, eight seconds left to go. Another right as the bell sounds. And after the bell, they continue to go. Richard Steele has to step in. And look out now. Lou Duva and Bo Williford in the two corners are going at it. Richard Steele has to step between the two traders. There's no room in boxing for that. There is no room in boxing for that kind of nonsense. That's hooliganism at any level. That should not be allowed. One of the most bizarre incidents you'll ever see. When tempers flare like that, experienced hands like Lou Duva and Williford should know better than to try to go at each other. That's some sometimes called maturity. Let's look at the end of round two. Let's see how things develop. Well, you can't hear the bell, but you can see that the fighting continued. Duva then held on to Quick Tillis so there wouldn't be any continuous action. Williford misinterpreted that and came in. That should never have happened. Never should that have happened. And here we go. Round three, and this crowd is revved up. Well, one of the things it did was wake up Quick Tillis because he's mad. Up to this point, he's just been willing to waltz, to be waltzing Matilda and not do too much fighting. He woke up. Now, I can see if Holyfield continued to punch Tillis while he was being held by yeah. Duva, that's one thing. Yeah. But Williford could not see that, apparently, from behind and did misinterpret. Well, there are specific rules which go to the conduct of a corner man. He is not to be involved in any brawl, much less precipitate one or start one. They could be in, in line for a stiff fine. In the meantime, Evander Holyfield continues to pick up the pace. His hand speed is awesome tonight. So what a wild conclusion to round two. And you wonder if something like that could eventually lead to a disqualification, but so much at stake here tonight. 
felt the two fighters weren't the ones who were getting hurt. It was two older guys that should know better. I don't think their cardiac system is meant to fight at this age. Lou Duba, who is known as the chief operating officer and head trainer, as far as Team Holyfield is concerned, Bo Williford is a manager. Well, both have been fighters, and both are short-tempered men, both of them. And, of course, we've seen that happen with Lou over and over and over again. Past the midway mark, round three. Things really heating up at the end of round two. And so far, this third round, uneventful, uh, relatively speaking. After the second round, it is a peaceful round, but the superior hand speed and ring generalship of Holyfield is vastly, evidently superior to Tillis, who went back to slow motion after a pretty peppy start. One of the tests that Lou Duba and everyone in the United States is waiting to see is how will Holyfield react when he feels a real heavyweight punch. And that we was a heavy right by Holyfield. A right to the body by Holyfield that pushes Tillis back into Holyfield's corner. It's that kind of punch to the body that makes uh, Quick Tillis wish that he was back on the range punching cattle. They don't punch back. Back in Gibson Station, Oklahoma, 50 miles southeast of his home in Tulsa. Less than 30 seconds, round three. An attack by Holyfield to the head and the chest. A beautiful attack. Double jab, right hand, hook after it, and followed with a series of combination punches. Tillis covering up well. Another good right by Holyfield. They landed a combination by Holyfield. And Tillis hangs on. Heading for the bell, round three. Right. Well, it was sheer chaos towards the end of round two. It is certainly worth another look. What happened here is as the bell rang and the fighters continued to fight, Duva, in order to, to separate them, took Tillis, the referee, took uh, Evander Holyfield, but Williford, who could not see all the way across, thought his man was being held and rushed uh, Duva. And, of course, you see the referee is getting between. He's got Evander Holyfield under control. Duva has got uh, Tillis under control, but here comes Williford. And he's saying, go on back. There's nothing. Some, somebody threw the, uh, a robe at him. And, and did you notice on the right hand side of the screen what happened there? Tillis and Holyfield hugged. <laughs> so let these old guys fight. Let's just have a little fun here. Here we go, Jimmer. A lot of Vaseline on the face of Tillis. Now Williford, one last rub. Tillis is trying to time the rushes of Holyfield. He's willing to take two or three shots. He feels he can catch them coming in, which are the punches that hurt. When you hit a guy coming in full speed and you're throwing your punch from your shoulder, those are the kind of punches Ali used on Foreman in the jungle that stunned him. And that's what he's trying to do, but it hasn't worked. There he comes. Combination by Tillis, round four, scheduled for 10. Live on Showtime from Caesars Tahoe in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Gorgeous evening capacity crowd, about 5,000 to see Evander Holyfield's heavyweight debut. And the action picking up again. Again and again, at the risk of being repetitious and monotonous, it is a question of hand speed, reflexes. That's what this boxing game is all about. It's a very young man at the top of his form and a guy sliding into oblivion that you're seeing here without the reflexes. When that happens, the equation usually goes to the man with the sharp reflexes. Holyfield's chin has yet to be tested. He has yet to be hit hard. Richard Steele saying, punch your way out. A heavy right by Holyfield. willing to punch and grab, trying to take and buy time. Whether he thinks the later rounds will be his because Holyfield with an added 12, 12 pounds and this uh, advantage of the altitude might make him tired, but right now it doesn't look like he's even breathing hard. Evander is doing very well, and Tillis looks like the person, the boxer, who is going to be exhausted. Field wearing the black trunks with the red trim. Tillish in the white trunks with the red, white, and blue trim. And Richard
Richard Steele is getting somewhat angry. Punch your way out, he keeps saying, because there's too much holding. See, that, that's the indication of a guy starting to resign. A couple of punches and he holds Holyfield. A couple of punches and he holds Holyfield. That's a guy saying, let me think of how I can get out of this. Not a positive approach. Let's say Holyfield's just waiting for that swift combination to put Tillis away. Less than 30 seconds, round four, scheduled for 10. Sunset falling over Lake Tahoe. Holyfield likes to set up that devastating right with the left jab. Weak left by Tillis. That right was blocked by Tillis. And at the bell, a hard right by Holyfield. And again, they almost went at it after the bell as we follow James Quick Tillis into his corner. Wally Matthews will have a clarification on the chaos at the end of round two. Wally? According to Chuck Minker of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the responsibility for calling a disqualification in that instance uh, lies solely with referee Richard Steele. Now, apparently, Lou Duva grabbed James Quick Tillis after the round, but Evander Holyfield never did hit him at that point. So, according to Minker, it did not look like grounds for disqualification, although Steele does have the power to disqualify a fighter or uh, for the actions of his corner immediately. Uh, Minker said that they will look at the tape afterward, but from what he could see at ringside, there was no disqualification called for there. Now right. back to Steve. Thank you very much, Wally. And that would have been ugly had Holyfield hit Tillis, uh, perhaps unwittingly. Unfortunately, he held back. It's very hard right when the, the bell sounds. It's, it's just hard to hold a, a punch back. And one punch isn't bad. Two or three are something else. I mean, as far as disqualification of that little riotous incident, I didn't think that was called for. I thought a mild fine and a hand slap. Don't do that again. Here's a $100 fine for you. That's something else. All right, round five, scheduled for 10. Steve Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Wally Matthews, ringside at Caesars Tahoe. Evander Holyfield continues to dictate the pace. He's wearing the black trunks. Tillis in the white. Holyfield's heavyweight debut. Tillis's legs looking wobbly. Look like they do not want to take too much more of this. Tillis just looking to protect his face. Tillis looks spent. Yes, he does. He's been looking spent for about the last uh, two rounds. The pounding uh, he's been taking. Oh, a combination by Holyfield, a blistering assault. And Tillis just throws him away with his right glove. The uppercut by Holyfield. We're seeing his entire repertoire here. And what he's learned in the uh, awful fights that he had to fight with Ocasio and De Leon was patience, patience, pace himself, don't go crazy. And that's uh, certainly holding him in good stead. He's fighting his fight, he's not getting nuts, he's just going at Tillis, chopping him down bit by bit. Tillis, for his part, doesn't seem like he's got an idea in his head as to how to hold off Holyfield, merely trying to uh, last the rounds. Evander Holyfield, 12 pounds heavier than his last fight when he won the World Cruiserweight Championship. Unified the title. He was 190. He is now 202. Tillis checks in at 210. He was 228 when he went into training. But he says he's in better shape now than when he fought Tyson two years ago. But so far, it's been Evander Holyfield controlling. Come on, your hands are free. Your hands are free. Let's fly. Oh, and a right by Holyfield. And Tillis looks like he's looking for a place to land. He's looking for a good excuse to go down. A couple of good shots, and he'll be gone. Thunderous drives by Evander Holyfield. Tillis with his hands down. Give Tillis credit. He's taking those shots. He could go down under any one of those. Let's see if he can survive the fifth round. Approaching 20 seconds remaining. After all, this is a man that a couple of years ago took everything a young Tyson had to give. So if his mind is set, oh, what a punch by Holyfield. And he followed up with a left and a right and another left. And Tillis is in trouble. Final seconds, round five. Can he make it to the bell? He hangs in there. It was almost 
almost as if Holyfield sensed this time that the bell would stop. He stopped punching just a second before the bell rang. So five rounds complete, and Tillis yeah, being baby. rocked. something about getting a doctor. Yeah, they're calling a doctor up. Quick tell us. Apparently, that's one way to get out of there. Dr. Edward Dene checking quick tell us. Let's see if he can hear what the doctor's saying. Okay. You want to fight? It's all over. The doctor apparently advised Richard Steele, and Steele signaled all over. Evander Holyfield has won his heavyweight... Stopping James Quick Tillis after round five. Uh, certainly a good introduction into the heavyweights. If there's a negative that can be found, it will be found, and it will be that he doesn't punch hard enough to lock out anybody, which is a, a, would be, in my estimation, nonsense. He punched very well. He showed a great deal of uh, hand speed. He showed a great deal of accuracy in his punching, patience, a, a mature attitude toward the thing. I think Tillis was just uh, in there for the last two or three rounds taking punishment. I don't think it was wise of him to have uh, come out for this round. And although the fans, I'm sure, are disappointed, I'm sure he's disappointed, it was rather pointless to come out and get knocked out. So Evander Holyfield, 1-0 and is a heavyweight, 19-0 and overall with 15 knockouts. And he's going to celebrate tonight. We'll take a look at the final moments. Well, you can, you can see from the accuracy. Look at that uppercut. And look at the head, the way it bobbles. You know he's in trouble. He, has, he is uh, dizzy. The punches are now beginning to rain on him. The effect is cumulative. If that round had been another 10 seconds, he would have been knocked out. And uh, the point of having the doctor come up was excellent. Richard Steele was perfect in his judgment. The doctor was good in his uh, 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 qualifications. And I'm glad that Bo Williford didn't get brave. And I'm glad that uh, the fighter himself didn't insist. I didn't see anybody raise a button no. I want to continue. Very wise on the part of everybody. A good, good first test for Holyfield. I think his people should be satisfied, and I think the category of boxers should now be much higher than Quick Tillis for his next fight. Good night for Lou Duva in 